Nearly six years ago, Alabama teenager Natalie Holloway disappeared in Aruba. Her mother Beth has been relentless in her pursuit of the truth in her daughter's case, which is still unsolved at this moment. In a new TV series that premiered last night on Lifetime, Vanished with Beth Holloway, she examines other disturbing and unsolved cases, missing person cases. And Beth Holloway joins us here this morning on The Early Show. Beth, good to see you this morning. How are you? Good. Good morning. We saw in a documentary that aired on Lifetime right before the premiere of your show, some video. When you were in this, uh, this prison in Peru, um, you went to go see Joran van der Sloot there. And first, I, I guess, A, what was behind the decision to go see him? And B, did you, have, did you have it scripted in your mind what you would say to him if you did, in fact, get a chance to see him? I never could have, never could have imagined that I was going to be face-to-face -face with Joran in prison. Um, opportunity presented itself, and I think as all parents of missing loved ones will do anything and everything, and um, I decided, okay, I want to I want to be face to face with him again. How were you able to, I mean, he is in this prison in Peru from all reports. It's this secluded, violent denizen where he's kind of just being left to wallow for the rest of his years. How did you get to this, to this spot, to be right in front of him like that? Well, I did have some of course, help from Peter DeVries and his team. And, and I entered the prison just like every other woman that afternoon. It was Wednesday afternoon, ladies, ladies' day, and I just went through the proper protocol, and, um, and it, just, uh, it just happened. Yeah. Did he, was he able to say, were you able to glean anything from talking to him? Did he well, say I, anything? You know, really, as a mother, I didn't go there to get information from Iran because obviously we can't do that. We've, we've known that that's just not going to happen. But yeah. what I did was to go there to give him information, just to remind him that I'm still here. Obviously, I'm not going anywhere, and I think to show him how easy it was for me just to walk in and be face to face with him. And what felt, I think, the best for me is when I walked out of there and left him in prison where he belongs. Yeah. Any doubts in your mind? I know you probably think about it every minute of every day. Is there any doubt that, that potentially Natalie is still alive? Oh, no, not after I discovered the ferocity in which he murdered Stephanie Flores. So I think that put it in perspective for me as to, as to what transpired with Natalie. Did it take a long, a long time for you to kind of come to that, that realization, especially after mm -hmm. hearing that case with Ms. Flores? It did, and I, and I think it was after the, just the shocking news for me to hear that Iran had murdered another young woman. I think that's when it all came into perspective for me as to just who this young man was, and he's, you know, a violent He's a killer. Yeah. So. To do a show like this, I think some would think, oh, God, why would you want to put herself through that? Because now you're hearing about all these other people and, and, and the, the torment and the torture that they have to go through. And it would kind of continue to surface feelings that you have. But you didn't feel that way. You, this is something you embraced and wanted to do. And it's, it's interesting because it, to vanish now that I'm doing it with the, this huge platform of and, and lifetime and able to reach so many more people. I had been doing it quietly the years before. So it had been five years that I had been going in just to the search of a missing loved one, just working with law enforcement, helping maybe organize a search, connecting the family to resources. So now I felt like I had a, a larger platform, something I never could have imagined being able to help the people to the, to the depth that we can now. Yeah. Is it somewhat therapeutic at all? This part is not therapeutic for me. What was therapeutic for me were the five years I spent traveling to high schools and colleges talking to our young sons and daughters about personal safety and travel safety. That was my cathartic experience. And what's the message behind this show and behind the, the different things that you do do, like you say, when you go to, and you speak to these schools? What are you trying to get across to these kids? Well, it's, it's interesting because within every vanished episode, there is a message of, of, of travel safety, personal safety, whether it's something as simple as what we think as parents is the buddy system or bringing your plans full circle, which is how do you want to end your outing at night? So those messages are there. That's the, the ones we've taught our children all their lives. But I think that they are now in such a powerful format. It can open up conversations with your young adults of, you know, choices to make. So, you know, those are what I deliver to the high school podiums too. Well, Beth, we appreciate you coming in and talking with us this morning. Thank, Thank you. you.